Today, we're gonna look at the Safari browser for the iPad Pro. Um, this is a browser that I think if you want to replace your laptop with, you need to get for the iPad Pro because it gives you a full experience of most websites um, when you're browsing on the iPad Pro. Browsers like Chrome and Brave, they give you the iPad versions of the browsers, whereas actually, when you use the iPad Pro, you can get a full versions. Um, one of the best examples is with YouTube, um, because with YouTube, you can actually get the full YouTube on here. So what you can do with YouTube is right click, and this is actually a good point as well. Safari actually supports a really nice right click. With other browsers um, on the iPad Pro, when you right click, it works, but it doesn't give you this. It doesn't give you this, this full list. Um, opening background is essentially opening a new tab. So you see like this. And then you can just kind of scroll through. And um, yeah, you can get like a good version of YouTube. Otherwise, on other browsers, it's a little bit different. In the case of stuff like YouTube Studio, it's a bit different as well because with YouTube Studio, it doesn't give you the full the full thing as well. So, so Safari is definitely the one if you need the full version, um, full version browsing experience. You can see Safari is it feels it just feels like Apple have really, you know, gone to town with this. Actually, this is probably not the best website to show actually because it's just too much. But if you go to a website like this, you know. Of course, Apple built the iPad Pro, so if they're gonna build a, a a browser for it, I mean, it should be good and it should work well. And to be fair, it does. It definitely works better than the Chrome browser or the Brave browser. Unfortunately, it still doesn't have the extensions that you want, um, but in fairness, Safari, even on a Mac, doesn't have the best uh, collection of extensions as well. Uh, so, you know, you kind of have to deal with that. So we're just going to test video here. So I'm going to just click this and you can see the video works really well. The sound is off. So don't, you know, think that the sound is broken or anything. The sound is off, but you can see video works really well and it looks really, really nice. As you can see, you can scroll, you, sorry, you can highlight, just right click and then you can copy and copy stuff that works super well now full disclosure as well i'm using the mx master 2s mouse to kind of scroll through feels really good uh, really natural it doesn't feel like jerky or anything really i also have a keyboard here um, it's just a logitech keyboard very basic keyboard and yeah everything connects very very well so as you can see super fast everything works quite well uh, on the ipad so one thing i wanted to show you all as well is the reading list section so this is quite cool what they've done here so you have uh, bookmarks which you can see here but you also have reading a reading list as well um, you can you know, show unread or just show all and obviously it has history here as well I, I do like the way they've done this because it kind of puts everything in one place uh, one one tick against Safari for me is that the settings for Safari aren't actually in Safari. So if you want to do anything with the settings for Safari, you have to go into the settings. For me, I think that's not the best way to do things. But you know, if you wanted to see all the different tabs, you can see the tabs are here. Um, and what I do like in terms of the kind of synergy between this and the Mac version or the desktop version is the tab stuff is very similar. So what you have on um, Mac OS, you kind of, it's mirrored quite well here. But like I said, you know, you, unfortunately you don't get any extensions. So that's, it makes it a very kind of limiting experience. Now if you, you can obviously edit Siri suggestions here, and then, you know, you can bring up the keyboards if you want. For me personally, even though this is, it feels quite stripped down, and to be fair, most of the iPad Pro browsers or iPad browsers feel quite stripped down. I still do think this is the best one uh, for 
doing work and any kind of productivity kind of things because it gives you the full version of the websites i just feel like it's a little bit more robust than other things uh, let's go back and focus on the ipad pro uh, version of safari and look at video so we saw a little bit of video on that website but let's look at like a dedicated video platform and actually while we're here let's just check out youtube so what you're going to find is youtube plays ads on safari um you can skip of course so it's all good but yeah it's pretty good i mean it's basically the full version you get so you can do the mini player stuff expand it cinema mode so yeah it's pretty good the thing is i actually think the youtube website is better than a youtube app on on um, the ipad pro but it is a little bit more clunky for touchscreen so it's not too bad for stuff like this but you can't like for example you, right now i'm pinching to kind of like zoom in but you can't do that but you can do that if you have the if you do it on the YouTube app. I would say YouTube needs to make the current YouTube app more like the desktop version, in my opinion. I really like the iPad Pro version of Safari. I think it's very slick. Uh, I like how very minimal it is. It would be nice if they put the settings in the app, but at the same time, you know, if you have other Apple devices, everything kind of just links in uh, and it kind of works seamlessly. So. You know, for me, from my point of view, it works quite well. As I said, I would choose this over all the browsers at the moment uh, for the iPad Pro. If it's if I'm doing work, if I'm not doing work, you know, there's other choices which are which are decent. Uh, but for me, this is the one that kind of rules them all. And to be fair, it makes sense because let's be honest, Apple made the iPad Pro, Apple made the iPad version of these apps, uh, and and of course they should. It's no brainer they should obviously make the best version if you found this video useful please hit the like button hit the subscribe button i know a lot of people are trying to figure out if it's feasible to move from a macbook to the ipad pro and you know one of the things that people will consider is the browsers that are available which is why i made this video to help you guys um, essentially decide can the ipad version of safari work for you or is it just not you know extensive enough now obviously this is going to be on a case-by-case -case basis um, depending on whether you use a lot of extensions and to be fair there aren't that many extensions of the mac version of safari so uh, you're probably not missing out on too much this may or may not work for you for me <clears throat> when i'm using my ipad for work um, any kind of work stuff that works within the browser i use safari um, and that hasn't changed if you found this video useful please hit the like button um, hit the subscribe button it takes a moment for you but it means the world to me i'll be making loads more ipad pro content so if you're interested in that uh just hit the subscribe button there'll be loads more coming the m1 ipad pro is on the horizon and i'll be reviewing that and covering a lot of that so yep yeah, thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next one